Do you suffer from major depression? Have you been told that it's due to a neurotransmitter imbalance and therefore your antidepressant medication is the only answer to help you? Have you not received benefit from those medications or anything else the mainstream medical model has tried? Well, if so, you're probably losing hope and you don't think you'll ever be helped. Well, in that model, you may never be helped because that model is operating from a, a pathologic, a view of the pathology that is incorrect. They're operating from a view that you are lacking, primarily lacking the neurotransmitter. So providing more neurotransmitter via reuptake inhibition is their answer to your depression. Well, updated science and immunology says that depression is not a primary neurotransmitter imbalance, but is a primary inflammatory issue. Today we're going to dive into how this works so that you can understand how you can get help and have hope back and have the best chance at returning to a life at Optimal. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. So if depression is not a primary neurotransmitter imbalance, what is it? Well, research shows, and more studies are being published every day, that depression's primary cause is neuroinflammation, or inflammation in general that leads to neuroinflammation. So what we want to understand is where is that inflammation coming from, and if we can address that inflammation, we have a better chance of optimizing the quality of life of the person with depression. So you know where the inflammation comes from, you just may not know that you know. Okay, so let's dive into that. The first step in creating depression is going to be some sort of stressor that drives inflammation. Well, studies show that psychosocial stress is a major driver of stress in our society. And you get this. It's the relationships. It's the workplace. It's the um, unfriendly people around you that are constantly chastising you or joking with you or pointing out your flaws. It's psychosocial stress. It's mental emotional stress, right? It's stress caused by interactions with other humans. That psychosocial stress results in the activation of a genetic transcription agent for inflammation called NF-kappa B. And that psychosocial stress also activates your sympathetic nervous system or your fight or flight response, the stress response, right? And those two things are going to lead to inflammation. We'll just put a big I there for inflammation. Well, when you're inflamed, that has an impact on your brain. And what it does is it decreases the frequency of firing of the neurons in your frontal lobe. So I know now you're like, what the heck are you saying? What's a frontal lobe? Well, the frontal lobe is the part of our brain that makes us human. It separates us out from the other mammals. Basically, the frontal lobe is what allows us to focus plan for the future, concentrate on a task at hand, allows us to be more emotional, etc., etc. So if the inflammation leads to, a, leads to a decrease in the frequency of firing of the frontal lobe, then that literally is going to result in decreased or depressed, we should say, cognition. So depression of all of the functions of the frontal lobe. So depressed affect or mood, depressed um, emotional responses, depressed or decreased ability to focus, concentrate, plan. So depression of frontal lobe functions results in what we call depression. Your quality of life goes down because you're, you're, you're no longer 
relating to those around you or functioning in your day-to-day -day life as well as you should. So let's think about this. If this depressed physiology occurs long term or becomes chronic, that's going to be chronic depression. Well, some depression is normal, right? Your dog dies, you're depressed for a little bit. A family member dies, you're depressed for a little bit, but we bounce back from that. But we're talking about chronic depression, chronic inflammation driving chronic depression, chronic inflammation from chronic stress, et cetera, et cetera. So someone who is chronically depressed eventually is going to go to a doctor, right? Well, in the United States, in mainstream medicine, if you see a doctor saying you're depressed, they're operating from the model that you're lacking monoamines or lacking a neurotransmitter, so you're going to get an antidepressant medication, typically an SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, that's going to, uh, the mechanism or the, the intent of the drug is to keep more serotonin in the synaptic clefts between neurons, so there's more stimulation. Well, if that doesn't work, then there's not a whole lot more they can do for you other than say, well, you're depressed. Well, studies show that major depressive patients have higher levels of neuroinflammation, which makes the drugs less effective. So if your practitioner doesn't know this, they're just gonna continue giving you the, the drugs or change drugs or change doses, not addressing your neuroinflammation, which is what's inhibiting the drug from having its optimal effect. So eventually you lose hope because you've got this chronic illness that isn't being helped by medicine, so you get more depressed and then loved ones and people around you start to lose empathy with the chronicity so they say oh he or she's just depressed whatever and that depresses you more right so this becomes a a, a cycle where the depressed cognition enters that loop of oh you're just depressed and the mainstream medical model doesn't have an answer for you so this lack of hope is another psychosocial stressor which drives further inflammation and sympathetic nervous system activation, further inflammation, further decrease of firing, more depression. So what you can see is that depression is really a loop of depression to inflammation, inflammation to depression. Now we have this. So we said psychosocial stress, but think about other stressors. There's chemical stress in the form of bad nutrition, medications, that sort of thing. There's physical stress, such as trauma, head injuries, a sedentary lifestyle. There's, there's environmental stress, like allergens, or toxins, or endocrine disruptors. So there's lots of stressors in our environment that could be driving your depression or piling onto the psychosocial stress, making this more complex and, and requiring more detective work. Well, what about other things that decrease frequency of firing of the brain? What about other things that activate sympathetic nervous system? What about other inflammatory triggers? So there's, there's a whole web of interconnectedness that needs to be evaluated in a depressed patient in order to create optimal results, improve quality of life, and lead to the best clinical benefit. So if you're someone suffering from depression, especially if you're someone suffering from depression in which the antidepressants haven't helped you and or psychotherapy aren't helping you, the research states that if you do not address the inflammatory component, the immune component in these depressed patients, then they are not going to get the optimal maximum benefit. So if you have tried the antidepressant drugs, you've tried the psychotherapy, those things may still be necessary but they may not get you where you need to go unless you address the inflammation. And that needs to be addressed from all angles. So that's where the functional medicine or a comprehensive approach to physiology is very beneficial because you leave no stone unturned to determine what are the stress triggers, what are the inflammatory triggers, what's, the, what's every piece of the puzzle contributing to the depression, and how can we maximally address those pieces to maximally decrease the depression and return you to optimal 
frequency of firing of the frontal lobe back to the optimal human you want to be.